Okay, now that we've got lights in the scene, let's go ahead and add some cameras. Now, by adding cameras, I mean adding cameras we don't already have. Because everything we're doing when we look through these, we're already looking through a camera. We're either in looking through a default camera, or if I was to pop this into this view, right? This is the top camera, right camera, front camera, right? There's already cameras in view. And that's basically, right, the camera is saying, is telling the computer what to draw to the screen because it's what, what it's aimed at. So we have our default camera. Notice we do have this cameras option here, and there's this use camera, except it's empty because we don't have any cameras other than the default camera. And then there's all these different types of projection. Um, you can experiment with this, um, you know, isometric and stuff is always, <laughs> is always fun, um, right? So there's different types of projection we can use. Um, and diametric is like um, a strange orientation. Um, Oddly, not so commonly used as isometric in terms of design work, but whatever. Um, so I'm going to go back to perspective, right? That's what the, the default is. Um, and so the way cameras work when we go to add a camera, right? This is our camera icon here. It's going to put the camera so that it is its view will match wherever our default camera is at the time we set the thing. So if I was to say, oh, this is... Um, maybe where I want to be, there's my, <laughs> there's my light pe peeking in. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and click on the standard camera. As soon as I do that, you'll see, I get this RS camera, which just stands for redshift camera. It's in my scene and you'll see this orange halo here. That means that we're basically, we're not currently, we're still looking through the default camera. But it's, this is here because we're in directly aligned with the camera we just set in place. So if I was to go ahead and zoom out now, scroll out on my view, right, you can see that there is now this object with all these edges. Um, and you'll see that there it, it's invisible, but there's this like camera body here. Um, and then this big uh, pyramid is what's visible in the shot. Right. And it and there's a couple settings like at this point, if I was I can adjust um, right, you know, how the zoom um, and then I can adjust the field of view, both vertical and horizontal as well there. Um, I'm going to leave this set to where it should where it was before. And so now the question is, well, how do I move through this camera and why would I want this second camera here? Well, what's nice is once you get say you, this is where you want your camera to be. You always, you want to take a, you want to render from this point of view, you're gonna, and you're gonna, so you're gonna be aligning things based on where this camera is. So compositionally things look correct and accurate and everything. Um, you want to be able to leave a camera here. And sometimes you want multiple cameras in the scene. If you're doing animated sequences, that there's a lot that goes on there as well. But sometimes, right, you want your camera there, but then you need to be able to move around in order to like better see what you're doing. And so that's why you have this default camera still. So how can we switch to the, the camera view? There's several ways. First, we can come up here, we can click on default camera and we can switch to RS camera. And I want you to note, right, these settings are visible here. Um, if I move, if I rotate my view or orbit or anything while I'm in this camera view, I will move the camera, right? The camera will, that's how I can, that's one of the ways I can move the camera. I don't have to use the move tool and everything. I can just like say, rotate my view over here. And if you look in the, um, if you have the coordinates manager, coordinates pane up for the camera, you can see that right rotation and position is changing as I move this view, right? Okay, so I can, so this is one way I can switch. I can also go to cameras and go to use camera and choose my RS camera there. The other way I can switch back and forth is if I come over here to the RS camera, when I have this camera active, there's this icon here that's white with a white dot in it. If I click on that now and deactivate it, it'll go gray with no dot in the center and it'll rotate me back to wherever my default camera was. All right, so now I'm in the default camera and then I can click on this and it's gonna zip me around and uh, put me back in this other camera. 
Okay, so let's look at some camera settings. I've got the camera selected. If I go to the object tab, there I can choose my pers uh, my um, projection type just like I did over in the menu. Um, I can adjust my focal length. Thirty six millimeters is normal. Note these are um, these are the angle of view, focal length, um, and some of these sensor presets um, are. What am I trying to say? They are um, accurate to physical cameras. And so if I was to increase this focal length, right, just like on a camera, the longer your focal length, right, it's more like a telephoto or, you know, a zoom lens. Um, and if I have a very narrow focal length or short focal length, right, it's going to be further apart. And I want you to note that that focal length, it's not just getting closer and further, it's also adding distortion, right? A 15 millimeter focal length is more or less a fisheye lens, right? And so the you can look at, you know, real cameras, set whatever the focal length is, and you can have an accurate representation of that same angle. Now, if I go down to sensors, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna be choosing any of these right now, I just wanna show you. All of these sensors are based on real world cameras. Some of them are, you may notice if you um, are interested in, you know, in film and video, um, Ari Alexa's Black Magic. I think they have Reds here, right? These are all really fancy production <laughs> cameras. Um, and there's other like CCD cameras, there's Hasselblads as well in here. Um, and then there's like IMAX and all of that. And so if you, so all of these settings are going to determine um, what this image looks like. And it's like, why would I have all these settings? Well, if you're doing visual effects and you've been given footage from a, um, you know, for like say it's a red camera that was used to shoot some scene and you're having, a, I don't know, a robot destroy something. Um, you would want to be able to composite this and have your camera that is on your object be all exactly the same settings as the camera that was used, right? Because then it will be, it should be perfect in terms of the framing and the way everything works and everything should seem con like it's in congruity as it goes through this, this process, right? So that's why they have these different settings. We don't need to worry about that for this. I just wanted to let you know what that is. And there's this, you know, the fit is horizontal, vertical, fill crop. We're not going to worry too much about that. Depth clipping, we're not going to worry about right now either. But basically, it says, like, should there be a place where we cut off new geometry being rendered? Or is there a place where it's too close to the camera and we cut it off? Again, not going to worry about that right now. Um, that's more of an advanced thing. And we're not really going to look through any of these things. I just want you to know how to create a camera and use it and place it in your scene. Um, we will go into this more in depth later. Um, you can also just play and see things, um, see what, what works for you. Um, but I just wanted to give you a few, like this is how you put a camera in your scene. And we will do more advanced camera stuff a little bit later. Okay, that's the end of this section.